I bid you welcome. Don't be afraid. Meet the Acker Monster, known to an entire generation of horror film fans as Uncle Forey, creator and editor of Famous Monsters of Filmland magazine. A magazine that made mothers cringe and made young boys who dreamt of monsters do anything to get it. My mother wouldn't let me have them in the house. I saw them at my cousin Scott's house, and I would, you know, read them voraciously, really pour over the... Because it was the only magazine out there that actually told you how it was done. Other magazines tried to imitate, but none had Forey's touch, his true love of science fiction. From the time the first issue of Famous Monsters hit the stand in 1958, through over 200 issues and beyond, the magazine and its creator became almost as famous as the famous monsters themselves. I get almost uh, daily reinforcement uh, letters from young men now in their 30s or so. They say, you made my childhood, and I just lived month for month for your magazine. <laughs> And uh, these kids grew up, uh, well, one of them was 14 years old, a uh, man who now gets $10 million advances for books he hasn't written yet, but uh, Stephen King sent me his first story when he was 14. And uh, all around me, little boys have grown up and turned out to be John Landis and George Lucas and uh, Steven Spielberg and Toby Hooper and John Carpenter and Rick Baker, Monster Maker. I just recently was looking back through some of my old issues to try to find some pictures that I needed for reference for a makeup I was going to do. And it really brings back a, a funny feeling of the whole time of my life when I had these magazines memorized. I, I knew what was on each page in each issue of Famous Monsters of Filmland. And it took the subject seriously. I mean, it was, it was funny and it had a lot of puns in it and it was written for an 11-year-old, which was great. But also it had a tremendous amount of history in it. I mean, he, he legitimized a very sort of illegitimate kind of movie making that was not, not taken seriously by anybody but the people who did it. And uh, I think that we all owe him a lot. Forey is important, and he's important historically. He's, uh, from the time he was a kid, with those other weird kids, Ray Harryhausen and Ray Bradbury, um, they had a very distinct vision of an appreciation of fantasy, not just as pulp, but as uh, a genuine literary or cinematic art form. I've got the president on the electroscan. John Landis has so much respect for Forrest Ackerman that he made him the president of the United States. Come in, men of Moon Rocket One. In his film, Amazon Women on the Moon. We read you, Mr. President. This is a proud day for all Americans. He did a much better job than the current president. For he's a natural. In fact, he's been in lots of films. It's sort of a payback for his inspiration of a generation and for being the ultimate science fiction fanatic. They're running low on liners. You think you can catch up? Don't worry. I'm keeping our spacemen happy, getting things squared away. While movie makers like Landis work to preserve Forey forever on film, he has continued to chronicle the history of horror films, even though famous monsters of Filmland is long gone. In the Acker Mansion, where the Acker Monster lives, is the greatest collection of monster, sci-fi, and horror movie memorabilia ever amassed. In 1926, when I was nine years old, the science fiction magazine jumped off the newsstand, grabbed hold of me and said, take me home, little boy, you will love me. From there it grew. Uh, three years after that, my mother was quite concerned. She said, son, do you realize how many of these magazines you have? And I said, no. And she said, well, I just counted them. You have 27. How can you imagine why by the time you're a grown man, you might have a hundred? At last count, Forrest J. Ackerman had 40,000 books, over 100,000 movie stills, hundreds of posters and autographs, and over 600 props, like the famous Dracula ring given him by his friend Bela Lugosi, and the mummy's ring, a gift from Boris Karloff. He's collected everything that ever came his way. I mean, if it was so much as a napkin that Boris Karloff used at a, at a, at a bar, and he's got it all in his house. Uh, and, and not only that, he lets people see it. I mean, he, he has tours, and he lets kids who rob him blind <laughs> and, 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 and look at the stuff, you know. Um, I mean, he's a big kid. He's, he's, the, he's the biggest kid that I ever met. And, uh, and he, I hope he always will be. He's lurking at you, babe. <laughs> uh -huh. 